Guess who's back, people? Money talk. I had to drag Tracy here because of the lots of comments and WhatsApp messages that I've been getting from new subscribers telling me that, oh, Tracy is the vibe. Like, she makes the show awesome. She makes the channel awesome. So I had to send a WhatsApp message begging her to come back. Well, let's talk. All right. So Tracy, how have you been? Well, trying to make some money <laughs> and keep it. And how far has that gone? The making it. Yeah, the keeping it. The making it. Yes. Because I mean, like you have to make it first before you keep it. Of course, yes. Mm -hmm. We're making it. It's now keeping it. It's now not deciding that Instagram. What can we buy? And then, for you know, the money is now. Oh, okay. So it's been pretty much hard for lots of Nigerians to make money, oh, yeah. especially putting into consideration that you know we have we're experiencing inflation mm -hmm. food prices have increased the last time i went to the market i couldn't believe how much ten thousand could give to me Nothing. prior to this time i could my as in like the wheelbarrow will have a lot of food stuff with ten thousand naira. but now yeah. it's it, it barely fills the wheelbarrow how would a poor man survive what sort of business can a in poor man do with little or no capital Jenny, you're because just there are no funds you, anywhere just just listening to you say this lets me know that this is much more you know spiritual than us just talking because mm -hmm. exactly that happened to me over the past christmas holidays i went to go and buy something in the market it was ridiculous i literally left there without anything because i said to myself if i who can afford it mm -hmm is grappling with the fact that things are this expensive how will the people so you know what i did i literally gave out what i bought and gave out the money and entered the car and drove home without anything i, I don't understand you gave out what you bought yes. with your money yeah to who to the people selling it i gave it out to them it was, it was horrible for me you know this thing you're saying that we will buy exactly the same goat normally you go buy a full goat somewhere you know, mm. 12 15 thousand mm -hmm. and it's like a really big goat you could eat Jim ah, 25 thousand naira goat full goat as in I went to the market the, I had I just had one bag I went to the market recently because you know <laughs> nowadays you go to the market it, it's like luxury for me going to the market right now so when I go to the market things that I used to buy like goat meat one kilo I was surprised it was two five back how many months ago it was like one thousand five or one thousand two one five seven it's high one thousand two i say a lot of beef just beef plain beef plain beef. i don't eat beef Ooh. okay now i want to start business mm -hmm. what sort of business am i going to start without capital or with something as small as fifty thousand there fifty thousand is too much so for example, let's we're using you as an example, yeah. right? Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, before we start to talk about, you know, what, what businesses can we start, you need to find out that making money is providing value. The moment you realize that you have to, pro if you provide value for someone, then you make money, you get paid for it, then you might as well just do anything and make money. So it means that if your neighbor, value for your neighbor is that every morning he can get water to shower and you provide that service, be willing to pay your landlord uh, making sure that your co-tenants pay on time is a service is willing to pay so that he doesn't have to come and be the one chasing them around you be willing to pay just look around you find a problem that you are able to solve well it's not haphazard solving find a problem that you're able to solve well a problem that uh, someone is willing to pay for and that's money and that cuts across a lot of things every time I come to talk to people about money I, I like to use this as an example I had this friend she told me she wanted to start selling shoes so I was like ah, are you going to go and do it ah you need money you need store you need this and she told me no watch me so she goes to Lagos into this really big store that mm. you know stocks of shoes and she takes pictures of all their shoes 
and she puts on her Instagram page. Now people see this, they want, they place an order, they pay, they pay for delivery. She pays those people and they send the shoe directly to the address. She doesn't have to spend a dime apart from data and her phone. So after a while, now she has a lot of customers that want shoes from her. Remember, she doesn't have a store. Yeah. She doesn't. Have, all that she has is that the pictures of the shoes. Do you understand? And because she has gone th there and she's seen that, oh, this is the, the quality that they provide. These are their sizes. And then she has done business with them about 10, 15 times. She now has a person there that once they bring in new stock, mm. they take pictures they sent to her. You know, that's exactly what I'm currently doing, right? I um, Before we started this, I told you that I just got into furniture making. Mm -hmm. And that's a male-dominated kind of... Um, you know profession, profession. Mm -hmm. but i am not a lazy person i like to challenge myself right but when i got into it i realized that man it's really stressful mm -hmm. how about i sketch a design mm -hmm. and give it to this guy this carpenter and he tell him it. make this kind of design for me i'll take a picture and then you know create a business page on instagram and just let me out let there. me just go one step further so this is another thing people don't get. So the value chain, business value chain, there's a lot of gap. The people who currently make chairs now mm. are constantly like, you know, having to redo the same designs until oh. maybe they see one new design from Obodo, Oyibo, from, mm. from Yankee. And then they recreate it. Then they recreate it. Yeah. You can't just make your business on sketching for furniture people. And people can just say, I like, I want this design of chair. And you say, okay. This is the kind of fabric that will go with the chair. Right. And the person says, what will it cost to make these chairs? Because these guys, you already have some sort of a deal with them to say, I will bring people, this will mm. be the discount, this is what I will take from it. Fine. So you can now cost. So you can be the one who sources for fabric yeah. because you know what kind of fabric will fit with the kind of style of right. a, a chair that you want to make. Mm -hmm. And then you take it to these people. Right. You sort of supervise and make sure they deliver the service and the quality that you want. And you deliver to your client. So you don't necessarily have to have wood or anything. Someone who's selling fabric for furniture or someone who's selling furniture um, equipment or the necessities like the wood and everything mm -hmm. is your customer. Mm -hmm. The person who's making it is your customer. You were just in the middle of the value chain saying that, let me sketch for you. Let me let me be the one that you know you you burden with the designs that you want to make. Uh, so it cuts across a lot of things. So it's not just even furniture. It can be interior. You can sketch how, um, the people like the cupboard or the wardrobe where it will stay so even when people want to build yeah you can have a portion of the building sketched out like a bedroom how yeah. it should look like and everything and then you offer those services to someone who's already like a big time architect to say i have this bedroom portions i have this workroom different portions that i have sketched in my mind mm -hmm. and it cuts across everything even for fashion designers you could just be the sketcher so fashion woodwork whatever that's it so you sketch for fashion designers do you understand upcoming mm -hmm. fashion designers experienced fashion designers you sketch for their their collections this is you they like it they pay uprightly that you own they own that collection from you you're never gonna do that for someone else so all that is find finding value and giving value because the moment you go and do something less than what you advertise, you know how we have this thing that they say, what I ordered, this is what I got. Yeah. That's it. You just have that one time pay, 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 payment and then you never get another, another one, one. But as long as you're consistently delivering value, you always have money. And once someone says, ah, I like this, your top, where did you get it? Oh, it's Jane, no, Jane drew it and this person made it too. People like good things. They'll be like, I want, want one. Another person likes it, another person likes it before you know. It's trendy. You know what's quite frustrating is the fact that you're you have a talented person who can sketch, mm -hmm. right? And then you sketch. They tell you, oh, is it not just to draw? Is it not to, just to draw? How much is this? Why why should it be expensive? Why should you be charging um, that much money for just ordinary sketching? So it's also you know making money in business. One of the things that I tell people, you need to know who your customer persona is, who your audience is. Mm -hmm. Your audience is to not be that person that is asking you to not just to draw. If it's just to draw now, why is he not drawing it and doing it now? Like they don't need you, you know? right? And so that's why it's important to already have like some um, laid down things you've already done, so that 
like you are your your work is clean cut for you so you say well i know it might seem like it's just to draw but this is what what it takes me to actually do this it takes me hours this is what it is and you keep it there want a person it has to be value of, of value to the person mm -hmm. because for example now if i really want to dazzle my client that i want to furnish their house and i say oh I, I, i'm going to have this all out of you know the out, out of box design for your furniture for the place how you where you place your mirrors and stuff like that and i i come and i see your sketch and i like it because my client is paying me for that i have money in my budget to pay you so you're looking for someone not just a consumer but also someone who is a customer so consumer is the end product the client that is going to use the mirror but the person who is constantly paying you money for your services is your customer that's who you're going to the person who can afford you without having to speak english that's who you're going to that's why on instagram once you go through one ad the subsequent ads that are coming to you are yes. sort of tailored because they take all that information and tailor it to say if have the time to scroll on instagram she touches five shoe shops yeah, that's it means she likes shoes. She wants, yeah. No, it doesn't even what she wants. It mm. means that it, the it, the probability of her buying shoes over buying jewelry is yeah, higher. Yeah. So we'll put it there. One of these days, you will tap and you will buy a shoe. Mm -hmm. And that's the same with for business. Find one value chain that there is a gap and fill it. It has to be a problem you're solving. It has to be a problem. So if you come into let me say a stretch of farms in Benway and you decide that you know what, let me take the stress of you guys. I own a tractor. You just pay me the subscription fee every three times in a year i come and i do the whole cutting and whatever of grass for you i come and i do harvesting i come and i do this so all they know is that when they come i've already tilled the ground for them they plant you know and go when it's time for this harvest they harvest after the harvest i come back and till the ground and make sure that there's no mulch or there's no leftover weed and stuff mm. like that that is taking there's someone some other person who their job is off taking wait until they finish they've harvested you are taking from them to go to shop right or you're taking from them to go to someone who's going to package and take to shop right mm -hmm. in every industry in every business check the value chain there's there are gaps so i don't believe in all this oh the business saturated even something as, as common now as blogging there's still a gap in that value chain that people can feel there's, there's too much problem uh number of people who are jobless in nigeria is increasing and you know we have lots of graduates being churned into the society no jobs and a lot of us are waiting for um nine to five jobs that are barely even paying see the thing about boxing people or raising people in a box limits them so we've been raised that you know go to school get employed this so a lot of people are still in that traditional sense of money making venture i have to get to work go get employed work for how many years mm -hmm. then go but if also when you go to this uh, um social media instagram uh, channels of business you see there are lots of nigerians that are running full-time big businesses there doesn't mean that these other ones do not have the capacity like i just think that they haven't tried I just think that they haven't launched into the deep and you see it's not as easy as it seems that i'm saying it yeah you have to try but for example like i just said about the shoe business it's the same thing with every other business you don't necessarily have to have anything that's why they brought it's called drop shipping you don't necessarily even have to have the stock all you need to do is create a channel for your cost customers or your your audience to come to you and you sell and you can sell what I'm say, currently selling. Mm. You can go to the market now, and somebody that's selling vegetable, you make a deal with them that you have customers that always want vegetables every Monday. So every Monday, all you need to do is on WhatsApp, reach out to those ten of your customers that how much vegetables do you want? They will tell you. You go to the market, and the person you already let the person know that okay, I'm coming. Please keep one thousand, five thousand, eight thousand. This. And you've established a business relationship where the person is not going to cheat you or do anything and the, everything is of quality you come you pick up you drop off the customer pays a, a premium the person who you bought from pays the premium mm. you make money so you necessarily didn't need to do so much let me tell you the money this girl makes in this shoe business so in a week she sells about 60 um to about 200 shoes not owned or produced or designed by her no nah, nothing so she makes 
some on some shoes two thousand or some shoes one thousand. Mm. If she sells two hundred shoes at one thousand naira gain in a week, it means that she's making two hundred thousand. Wait, I need to get this clear, right? Does she have the f shoes on ground? No. So you make an order and she meets she, the wholesaler. She, she makes and the same order you make is what the order she makes to the wholesaler. Mm. And just sends your address. Right. She doesn't have to literally do all she needs to do is to connect you and the wholesaler. Wow. Wow. So the wholesaler delivers the shoe to you. Mm. She just confirms that these shoes have been delivered. So also she takes it on if there's a mistake, she takes it on and says, Oh, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. So she she takes that risk. So there's certain risk in it, but there's more profit in it than the risk. Because at first she started with delivering it herself, you know, she receiving the shoes and delivering and she felt like it was too much work. Mm. Why not just pay for delivery? These people just deliver directly mm -hmm. to you and mm -hmm. you get your shoes. And it's, it's been happening. And I was I spoke to her uh, maybe like nine days ago and she says more often than not there are a lot more success stories than when there are mistakes or mishaps or stuff like that those things happen in business but she's is bigger now she literally can place order for shoes when they are going to go and buy their own shoes she can say i want more of this i want more of this i want more of this because of the algorithm of more the, the amount of shoes that she sells in a week so she sees that more people are, are buying red heels mm. or more flats she says okay i want more flats when you go to go and buy I want more white flats in your bag. Right. So they get, so they sent to her. Now this is she makes two hundred thousand in a week. So what? In, that's what I'm saying. One thousand naira on two hundred shoes is two hundred thousand in a week. One thousand naira times two hundred. Oh my days! I have been sleeping on real money. So two hundred thousand times four is eight hundred thousand naira a week. Let's say she spends two hundred thousand out of that money for Instagram ads and all these things Goodness every me. month. She wow. still has six hundred thousand every month. The only money she's putting into it is making sure that she's, she's sponsoring her yeah. channels, maybe calls to customers to say, have right. you received it? Right. That's why I say, even if she takes out, even if she spends 200k, mm -hmm. she has no shop. So she's not running generator or nothing. It's a she's just shop. a middleman. That's it. Yeah, she's just there. No, but they don't even know. I know now that the wholesaler, everybody thinks that she's is her shop business. Right, yeah. right, right. And she doesn't stockpile. Do you understand? She tells you that she doesn't stockpile. When you pay, she gives you a week for your, for your shoes to be delivered to you. Right. If your shoes stay more than a month, you forfeit the shoe. Rules. And then how you can get an influencer to help you, you know, build your business is, you know, you get your product, right? Take one of that product and send it to the influencer as a gift or maybe to try and then they just help you promote it on their pages if they like it. That's one of the ways where, you know, they can divert traffic their, to their traffic page. to your page. Yeah. And then also, it's, it's not just about making money. Like I said, you know, making money is one thing, mm -hmm. keeping it is another. Because you got to make that 600000 in a month and every day you're in hustle and bustle, you are slaying for oh, the king no slaying no. for the ground you're spending it you find out that by the end of the month you still have nothing mm, so you might true. as well not have stressed yourself to make it at all so it's important that you spend less than you earn so as you're having your profits come in you invested in maybe stocks cryptocurrencies for people that have mind to do it to you have your money. to understand cryptocurrency what cryptocurrency is and how it works ah. for you to get into it have right? you understood it, it, it yeah it is it is volatile and i think for you to make progress with cryptocurrency you have to invest and then leave it for years for it to grow leave it for years will all i'm saying is it's not for the faint-hearted <laughs> so that you don't go and say Oh, Jane asked me to go and invest. Keep it there. You open your app one day and you, you see that. You know why I'm saying this? Because money. Bitcoin, okay. right? When I first learned about Bitcoin, Bitcoin was $600 when I first learned about it. But look at it now. Did you buy them? I bought them, but I was selling. You know, I, I, I would buy and then I would use the money. I would buy, wait for a while. When it rises, I just sell it. Now, all those monies that I put into cryptocurrency, um, into Bitcoin, if I go back and I check my past transaction, they are in thousands of dollars. So if I had come, if I had left those money 
but way way back in 2000 was it 2016 or 2017 right when it was like six hundred dollars if i had left it till now me you know gonna see that neyan dust now for the day uh, miami uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> or the bahamas you will now release your page and she, say that she, come and talk to the crypto master do you understand i get it do you understand as in like the the thing about cryptocurrency do you is know why putting, why putting, yours is putting better? your money in there do you know why yours is better and leaving it for years I spent years i can't remember my password or anything <gasps> Oh my god, that means you still have money in there. I still have bitcoins. I, sh I, sh I should be a fucking big time millionaire. Oh my god, we but have to find a way to get I've, you. I've done so many times and I don't want to just go and lock myself out. Oh my god. You know, so that's the thing with blockchain. blockchain when did you buy? This is like maybe 2012. You're a millionaire. You I know what I'm saying. Yes, yes. Oh my god. There's nothing that we haven't done. Like, I have even paid people to do like how much code. how much worth of bitcoin i have about four bitcoins four, four? not yeah four one two three Jesus four. and let me let me tell you the funny thing it was that doing all that bitcoin thing my younger brother everybody was just saying oh let's buy let's buy you know i did it out of a place of let me just be part of people that are doing buying bitcoin no you have to find a way to get that money out you know that there are people who have much more than me that are still looking for a way to crack their they even wish asking people that yeah all, all over the country all over the world do you know how much women. four B bitcoin is? i said do you know let me tell you what has come what calmed me down oh my like I, I think i was depressed oh the my first goodness time when this but I, I saw that there is a like a thread it's a thread on people who forgot their password yeah. people who have like 20 oh my 40 goodness. 50 people that are asking that let's share it into two if anybody can hack it but then if you can hack it then it, it will not it will no longer be blockchain mm. see i didn't buy it as i was trying to be an investor yeah i just wanted something trendy everybody's doing bitcoin bitcoin right. bitcoin because blockchain is like a code written and another code on top of it yes then this code now says that nothing under this can come do you understand right. so because the, there are a lot of people who get a say like it's, it's locked so it's not that like one person can override or anybody mm. can override there's just a lot of checks that not that do not allow anybody to one and not any one person has the encryption. power to be able to yeah yeah so there's just like quadruple encryption i don't know how they do this in itc you know but tech talk but well then again it also taught me something that Whenever you're making such purchases, you have to be very, very, very aware of mm -hmm. what you're putting your money into. And not just say, oh, because I have money now, I'm willing to do it. Be Write down these things. You can have a wallet for your password. See, it's after this thing that I now know that I have a wallet for my passwords for everything that I'm doing. There's something called Upwork. You need to look at it. You just go there. There's a lot of jobs posted and it's virtual. You just go you apply for one of the jobs because you get like a uh, coins that you use in bidding for the job the person actually make check that the person is um that their money is satisfied so they've been paying for their jobs through upwork you do and it's per hour mm -hmm. yeah it's called upwork go and register i know i've done like works virtual assistant program manager you don't need to stand up how much do you get paid sometimes up to 20 to 30 dollars an hour really yes you don't need any credential for that you need your credentials because if you put in it's not like credentials credentials but mm. you need to see show, show show the work you've done you need to show expertise and so so on so stuff right and so people come there to put out for work i need a virtual assistant for uh two months um if you need to work at least eight hours a week mm -hmm. a, a day yeah 40 hours a week you know this is what i want this is what i'm willing to pay even if you get 15 dollars an hour jane eight hours is almost about one thirty dollars or so yeah so imagine that one thirty dollars times um five days so you're looking at close to maybe about seven hundred dollars in a week which is which is a good thing though so seven times four is mm. about two thousand eight hundred it's about three thousand dollars in a month mm. but that's just one off one work that you're doing off one project mm -hmm. that you're working on and you can do a lot more 
I'm just telling people to go out there. One of the things that hinders us is that we are there waiting for someone to come and say, ah, okay, I have somebody that can do. There will be people like that. People will refer you. People will, you know, um, recommend you for jobs. But then go out there. See, I can't, I, I don't know. The only work I've not done is prostitution. All right. I'm telling you. Right. I've done I've been interior designer I've done work in people's houses I've done painting for someone's house is it even helping out in someone's house to get paid um, personal shopper uh, radio TV logistics branding media PR now entered into entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneur development and support and in all these things I quickly go and certify myself first go and learn it so when you're talking now you're talking from a point yeah, of authority you're mentoring and you're coaching a startup and you're saying uh we need to set milestones for you you need to know what is your, your social media coverage for the week mm. i need you to go from 10 to 20 followers by monday i need to go from 20 to 100 in two weeks and how do we do that what are the steps you're going to take you're going to follow through that person by the time those that person achieves those goals or all those people you're mentoring so you can put mentor on your CV. People want to know that they are not putting their job in the hand of an amateur. So what would you advise someone who is working in a job that they really don't like, but they're scared to leave and you know do something that they would you know see themselves enjoying? So first and foremost, you need to ask yourself, you know, now if I leave this job, you know, would I be able to start doing that stuff and still take care of myself so while you're still working here while you're still earning pay here start to work on that your passion and that stuff that you like until you get up to a point where you're very comfortable mm -hmm. doing it um, there are resources that this your current job can afford for you to do this your passion utilize all of it if it's free word free word make sure you utilize all of it to build when you have built to a place um, where you feel like you're comfortable now yeah then you can go in and put in your resignation and then move to that job but then there's a second way of me how I do it I just <sighs> quit cold turkey ah I know you just quit cold <laughs> turkey Tracy once Tracy is done and dusted she leaves I just leave like I, go to that I don't stop. know how she where she gets the courage from I because can't do I that I tell myself I that can't do that I did bring myself to this world mm. so the person who brought me to this world is of the person's best interest to see that I, I am doing well. Right. So I will put in my own part of the work, yeah? Knowing fully well that God has done his own part of the work. So I'm out there. And that's the thing, you know, people have pride when you are looking for something. There's no pride in ugliness, like my parents would say. You are ugly, you are proud. Who are you doing? Yourself, you'll be hungry. There are days that I want to sleep, Jane. I know I cannot sleep because, you know, I tell myself that go and sleep. You, 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 hunger will kill you tomorrow. So I have to stand up. You're the one that quit your 9 to 5 job. Now, it's, it's harder. People think that, oh, now I am not doing 9 to 5 job, so I can wake up at any time and go and attend to that work. No. Mm. You will do much more for that work that you're very passionate about. That's your now freelancer work. You will do much more. Like a hundred times more. Yes, you will put in more. There's more sweat, more work. But then what just happens is that it's you. You are the deciding factor. You are the standard. You and, and if you set very high standards in the beginning it's easier for you to follow up in the years coming yeah. because you know that now nah, i can't do this and that's it on this show if you did like it subscribe mm -hmm. and turn on your notification hit the notification bell so that you would be the first person to get notified whenever i post a video here and then if you really did like and then if you really did like <laughs> if you really did like you know business talk um everything mm -hmm. we just said uh, and you're looking to to ask more <laughs> and you're looking to get more answers mm -hmm. um for your financial problems or your business ideas or strategy all you need to do is just send a message send your questions but, but, um, but jane i'll take them yeah and she's normally going would to pay but i'll take them please tracy is a guru when it comes to business trust me on that she is a businesswoman to the core and i really do respect her so send your questions pertaining to business finances and let's see how we could talk more and you know enlighten each other okay
Till next time, don't forget to be fabulous. Mwah. Money talk.